W32.changeup is a threat that actually originated a few years ago, around the, the second half, the second half of 2009. And more recently, we've actually seen an uptick in variations of this threat, which actually we've seen variations introduced over the years. But around the, the later half or late uh, 2012 to early, early 2013, we started seeing a number of uh, variations of ChangeUp, and we've seen a big uptick in its presence, especially in enterprise environments. Now, this particular threat, ChangeUp, also goes by the name Vobfuss. Uh, but I think changeup is easier to pronounce, so I'm going to stick with that particular uh, nomenclature. And what I wanted to do in this video is give you more of a, a high-level overview, a flavor, if you will, for what this particular threat does. Okay? So for starters, I want to point out that changeup actually is written in Visual Basic. And Visual Basic, which is also known as, uh, as VB, is a programming language that was developed by Microsoft. It's a bit more of a, a modernist version of a language that was known as BASIC, which uh, anybody who's been in computer science for a long time should know about. And we've actually seen a number of threats implemented over the years using Visual BASIC. Now, by its very nature, Visual BASIC is a, a capability, it's a language that's, that's really designed for being able to do uh, what's known as rapid application development, also sometimes called RAD. Uh, but basically, it, it allows people to who, to really develop software without that much of, a, of the deeper system understanding. It allows really anyone with a modicum of technical ability to quickly develop computer software. Okay, And ChangeUp is currently among the most popular, if not the most popular threat uh, written in Visual Basic uh, around, I guess, this modern time in terms of what's going on right now in the malware ecosystem. Now, maybe some other threat will overtake it down the line, but as of right now, it's perhaps the most popular threat written, or threat family rather, written in Visual Basic. Okay, now I want to point out also that threats that are written in Visual Basic normally aren't known for their sophistication. Uh, typically, when you have more sophisticated threats, uh, they're written in languages like C or, or a lower level language like maybe assembly. And the reason for that is that most attackers who are trying to write sophisticated threats uh, typically want their malware to be able to interact with the system at a very low level. Okay, and actually, maybe I should clarify that when I say low level, um, that really means interacting with the system at its most fundamental, basic, uh, native level. And so when I say low level threats, they actually are more sophisticated than, than high level threats typically, even though a term like low level ostensibly might seem like I'm um, saying the opposite. Okay, now change up in particular, um, even though it's not terribly sophisticated compared to a lot of the other malware we see, it is a bit more sophisticated than typical threats written in Visual Basic. But you know, I'm not really saying a lot here because at the end of the day, ChangeUp is not, uh, in the grand scheme of things, even nearly as sophisticated as a lot of the other malware we see. For example, I've done some videos on Flame, uh, which was a more, much, much, much more complex piece of malware than ChangeUp. Okay? So let me talk a little bit about what ChangeUp does and maybe how it operates. Uh, so for starters, uh, ChangeUp actually spreads via removable media drives. Uh, and also spreads via uh, network shares. And in particular, uh, what ChangeUp does is it uses a capability in Windows that's known as auto run. Okay, auto run. And that basically allows a piece of software to run automatically under certain circumstances. And it leverages this particular functionality of auto run and spreads itself via removable devices. Uh, and also can get onto a system via traditional techniques like social engineering and exploits and that, and that sort of thing. Okay? The other thing about ChangeUp that's worth noting is that it's highly, highly polymorphic. Uh, we constantly see new instances of ChangeUp, and in fact, what ChangeUp can do is it can create a polymorphic copy of itself whenever it spreads. So if it kind of lands on one machine, uh, you might see one version of ChangeUp, and then as it spreads uh, to other machines, it'll start to look a bit different uh, in, in fundamental ways. And so it, it, it seems like the, the malware is different on the outside, even though the same uh, piece of malware is, in fact, uh, underneath is, is really identical, but the, the window dressing itself has changed so much, okay? And it's this really highly polymorphic nature of ChangeUp that perhaps explains why it seems to have infiltrated so many different organizations. Uh, and it really turns out, you know, that the traditional commercial malware defense technologies, they don't really handle polymorphic threats that well. There, I mean, there are techniques for handling polymorphic threats, but I think these techniques 
don't work as well in practice as, as people would like. And so we are seeing many instances of change up infecting environments that already deploy traditional endpoint protection software. Okay, now change up itself, I do want to point out, is also falls into the class of malware. It's, it's called a dropper. Okay, and primarily change up drops other pieces of malware onto a system. Uh, so what kinds of other nefarious applications can it drop? Well, we've seen ChangeUp drop things like uh, scareware programs. And scareware programs are programs that uh, purport to be traditional uh, antivirus programs or anti-malware programs. And they tell people, they scare them by telling users that they are infected with the threat. And then they get the users to pay a fee to, to quote unquote remove the infection that they're scaring the users about. Uh, of course, a lot of users get scared. They oblige, they provide their credit card details to remove this supposed threat. Uh, and that in turn leads to a very healthy profit for the malware distributor, when in reality there was really nothing on that system that warranted that scary. In fact, if anything, the system was already infected and paying a fee is not going to help alleviate that, that situation at all. Okay, uh, ChangeUp is also known or has been seen to drop uh, things like adware. Okay, adware is uh, a type of software application that can really make money by infecting or co-opting an infected system and displaying advertisements on the system. Another application of, of ChangeUp is uh, to put a banking trojan. Uh, common examples of banking trojans include things like uh, uh, like Zeus, and Zeus is also known as uh, a Zbot. Okay, and so we do see banking trojans on uh, ChangeUp infected systems, and really these banking trojans are designed to uh, listen in or surreptitiously observe banking transactions and then piggyback on top of those transactions to create more fraudulent transactions without the user being aware of what's going on. Okay, now given this, this really heterogeneous nature of the payloads that ChangeUp installs, uh, it is my belief, and I think the belief of other people in the industry, that ChangeUp is likely being used as part of a broader uh, pay per install scheme. Okay, pay per install schemes are essentially just a, a, a type of business model uh, that's used among malware authors. And in these types of paper install campaigns, what malware authors basically do is, is they effectively pay a commission to someone to distribute their malware to a large number of systems. Uh, it's, it's like I said, it's essentially an affiliate or referral business model that cyber criminals leverage. Uh, in this particular case, ChangeUp acts really as a beachhead on a system to enable this type of paper install model to work. Okay. Now one last point I do want to make about ChangeUp, again, it's in relation to one of the more nefarious things it does. And the changeup also drops, in many cases, it drops a rootkit onto the system. Okay? And a rootkit, if you recall, um, and I've done some videos on rootkits, a rootkit is basically a software application that can hide its own presence and hide the presence of other applications as well. And that makes it very difficult, very hard to detect and remove. Okay? And as I mentioned, I did some other videos on rootkits that you may want to watch for more details. Those videos do go into considerable detail on how rootkits work and operate at a very low level as well, okay? But the main point here is that we have seen in the wild, in the field, we've seen some fairly nasty rootkit installations stemming from ChangeUp. And if you happen to be in a scenario where one of these rootkits has hit a system via ChangeUp, then I think the safest thing to do in many cases is to just re-image the system or to pay the entire system. Now, that's not something you always want to do, but if it is a nasty enough threat and you are aware that it's a very nasty threat, then re-imaging the entire system is perhaps the best uh, the best course of action depending on your actual environment. Okay, so the upshot at the end of the day is a change up, you know, even though it's not that sophisticated as a threat, especially compared to a lot of other threats we see, it is still sophisticated enough that it's bypassing a lot of traditional endpoint security mechanisms and it is causing a lot of damage, a lot of collateral damage along the way by dropping so many different types of applications onto compromised systems and creating a real nightmare for incident response teams who have to kind of clean this whole mess up.